Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit haul. Okay, so I'm going to try this new thing on this channel where rather than do one giant haul once a month, I'm going to try breaking up my hauls into smaller portions and posting them on Saturdays. We'll see how this goes. I don't know yet. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not. Also, because it feels a little strange to have such a small haul, I think we're covering... Ooh, is it nine or ten items today? It's quite a small haul. A small haul. A bite-sized haul, if you will. Write that down, that's cute. Today's video is going to be Korean skincare, and since you all, you all know me, we kind of go back a bit with some of this stuff. Some of these I bought as far back as December, and I'm finally hauling. I know, I know, I know. We will get into that, rest assured, but hopefully it's just a fun little haul for you all today. Okay. I did buy some items from Neogen, and I have been so utterly on the fence about these. I don't even think anyone caught that this was actually in the back of my last Korean haul video. No, the haul before that one. I just cannot make up my mind. Let me not get ahead of myself. Let me tell you what happened with me and Neogen and why I'm kind of on the fence, but ultimately happy. All right, so it starts with the Real Flower Cleansing Water Calendula. This is a calming bio cleanser. It's a micellar water. And thankfully, they do say that this is made with no rinse technology. Of course, they give the standard disclaimer. So here's the deal with micellar water. Some of them say no rinse technology. And in that case, you may be able to not rinse after using those. But that's not always the case. Some people find they do have to rinse always, no matter what the bottle says. So it's just kind of a CYA type of warning on the label. But yeah, if you see no rinse, you may be able to not rinse. So I've been actually really enjoying this. Um, I'm fortunate in that calendula works out for me. That's an ingredient that doesn't work for everybody. This product does also contain fragrance, but you know, it's been going well. It has been going well. I think at the end of the day, I slightly prefer the fresh one that I absolutely love, but it's a big price difference. It's a big price difference. This is a 300 milliliter bottle. I've been liking it. So based on how much I was liking that, I made a later order, which was a much bigger order. I admit I was going a little overboard with the buying of Korean products in uh, December-ish. This was the All Night Moisture and Relief Mask. I wanted to try something else from Neogen. And I don't even know what was going through my head because this channel is so ingredients oriented. I'm always talking about ingredients. I'm talking about allergens. And yet I was in add to cart mode and I didn't check the ingredients on this product. I feel like I kind of know what was going on back then in that my interest in Korean skincare just kind of burst one day, right? You all saw this happen. And for some reason, I had it in my head that the vast majority of Korean beauty brands don't use essential oils. At this point, looking back, I don't even know why I thought that. It's bizarre because it's true that there are some Korean brands that don't use essential oils, but just like with Western products, some do and some don't. This is all to tell you that I get my order in the mail, and here's what I see on the side of the box. Lavender oil, bergamot oil, orange peel oil, rosewood oil, rosemary leaf oil, eucalyptus oil, tea tree. But see, it gets even stranger. It gets even stranger. That's why I didn't want to just judge this product when I was scared to use it. Instead, I was thinking, all right, well, I'm not going to bother with returning this. So let's try it. Let's see what happens. And get this. This somehow is not causing me any kind of problems, not any kind of reactions. I'm just waking up with smooth, glowing, hydrated skin as if I'm not using an ingredient that typically causes me an allergic reaction. I don't understand it. I feel like part of my suspicion is that even though if you look at the ingredients list, those are kind of in the middle of the ingredients list, it's still a very light scent. At the end of the day, I'm saying I still feel it's a risky product. I mean, if you do have those allergies, be cautious, you know? But it also leaves me very perplexed on the entire allergen situation. I think it is just, you know, plant ingredients. They're such a curveball. Anyway, out of an abundance of caution, my later purchase, this is a recent Yes Style haul. This time around, I figured out to read ingredients. So, I bought these products through Yes Style with a coupon, and by the way, my rewards code will be up on the screen. It is in all capitals. That's the trick. That's what we were missing before. So anyway, this is the Anua 
Heart Leaf Soothing Toner, 77% Heart Leaf. I saw a lot of recommendations for this for acne prone skin and looking at the ingredients, I do see why. It doesn't contain any essential oils. It's got not just your heart leaf, but also uh, Sika in it. Heart leaf seems to be getting a lot of attention because it is an anti-inflammatory and hydrating combination ingredient. It can still have an allergic reaction potential. So of course, proceed with caution when you're talking about any, any plant ingredient as we discussed with the last product. Uh, but yeah, it's been going really well. I do, I like the size of it. This whole brand apparently is about keeping things simple, so hence the lack of fragrance and essential oils. I do really like it. I've also used this to make some sheet masks. Great use for that. I, that is my thing lately. I am DIY DIYing so many sheet masks. And then this, y'all, this was a recommendation from one of you, the COSRX Propolis Honey overnight mask. So I really like the entire Propolis series. Apparently this was recently reformulated. I'm not sure what they changed. This is new to me, but oh my goodness, it is absolutely incredible depending on what you look for in your skincare. This is such a thick, super occlusive overnight mask. I mean, it is not going to be for everybody. Definitely put your hair up overnight if you choose to use this. Trust me on that one. But oh my goodness, it is so healing. See, a lot of that has to do with not just the ingredients, you know, propolis, royal jelly. We've talked a lot about those wonderful healing ingredients, but it also has to do with the texture of a product. And when you have this occlusive nature that is sealing all of those ingredients in and protecting you from the environment, really allowing for healing to take place in your skin, Oh my goodness, it is so, so well done. No added fragrance, no essential oils, just absolutely amazing. I know I do have two overnight masks in one tiny little haul video, so between the two, ooh, this one is absolutely for me. Of course, it's not vegan, obviously. Also contains some beeswax ingredients in addition to the honey, royal jelly, propolis. But if you like, I don't know, slug life, oh my goodness, I just, I, I'm so pleased with this. As for the I'm From Fig Scrub Mask, okay, it's not that this is a fail. It's just that I understand the negative reviews with this product. You have to like physical exfoliation. I'm actually, I don't really understand this type of product actually, because to me it's simply a physical exfoliating scrub, but it's also a mask that you can leave on for five to 10 minutes. Uh, however, you know, it does have a bit of a scent to it. And for whatever reason, I love the scent of the cleansing balm. I'm not that big of a fan of this. Here's the thing with this one. This is made with 1.2% fig powder. Excellent. And then walnut shell powder. I'm sure there is a very small amount in here, but that's that exact ingredient that some amount of people don't want to use. And that's okay. You know, personal preferences and skincare. We respect everyone's choices on this channel. So I, at the end of the day, I don't mind it personally, but I actually, I don't really see myself repurchasing this and I don't see it as quite the must have that I see from a lot of other I'm From products. Didn't I rank them amazing? I'm pretty sure I, yeah, I definitely did. So yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. It's just, it's just not something I'll repurchase. And then the company 107 was kind enough to send me over some of their products. I am so mad at myself for not doing this haul before I asked you which brands you want to see me trial because this is one of those kind of hidden gym brands, I feel. I talked about their serum in that video and I was so blown away by it. What stood out to me is that it, it seems so hard for a company to really come out with something unique and innovative and yet that is truly a serum in a mist format. I've just never seen anyone else nail it like 107 did. So I was so excited to try the rest of their products and what I'm going to say overall is I feel like this brand has really mastered texture in a way that actually reminds me the most of Primera. So that is incredibly exciting for me because we've talked about the inaccessibility of Primera at this particular moment, but not even just that. This brand is also based around aged vinegar. So they talk a lot about the benefits of using aged vinegar, which of course contains 
postbiotics. I respect that they are calling it postbiotics because that is a far more accurate term than probiotics. We often talk about probiotic containing skincare, but the reality is you also need to have preservatives in your skincare products to sell them, so you can't actually be selling living probiotics in your skincare products. Instead, you're getting postbiotics, which are the byproducts of those probiotics, but those do give your skin incredible benefits. It includes acetic acid, uh, alpha hydroxy acids, and of course, all of that in really nice textures. Wait, can I please tell you a quick little mini story about my heartbreak at Sephora Primera? When Primera announced they were leaving the US, I got on the phone with Sephora and I said, you gotta tell me what products you carry that are similar to Primera because there's just nothing quite like the texture of that serum, the texture of the moisturizer, what compares? So the Sephora customer service rep is on the phone and she says, okay, hold on, I will come back to you, I'm gonna go ask and get you a good answer. And I'm like, yeah, totally, totally fine. Take as long as you need, I just need a substitute. Four minutes later, she comes back on the phone and she says, okay, it's gonna be Fenty Skincare. I'm sitting there thinking, Fenty Skincare is similar to Primera? She's like, yes. But what about the fragrances and the dyes? It's actually the dyes in Fenty that bothers me more than anything else. I'm like, ah, oh, why did I even call and ask? Because obviously, you know what Sephora was gonna recommend to me? A Kindo brand. And this is all to tell you, this 107 brand is coming the closest for me in terms of textures. So let me start with this Chaga Jelly Low pH Cleanser. Just have a look at this, I'll have a close up for you. What an absolutely gorgeous texture that is a very, very, very gentle physical exfoliation. So you know, if you're worried about overdoing physical exfoliation but you want a teensy little bit of it, you're getting some uh, bits of mushroom, I believe, in this. In addition to the aged vinegar, it actually does contain some essential oils, so check the ingredients list if you're very sensitive, but some people can use a wash-off formula. Beautiful foaming effect. And no, it's not a drying cleanser, which has been a, a bit of a, a difficulty for me in finding Korean skincare cleansers. It's so lovely. And then the Micro Drizzle Hydro Toner. This is such a gorgeous toner. It's one of those that just absorbs so quickly into your skin. Contains three different forms of hyaluronic acid in addition to that aged vinegar. No added essential oils or fragrance with this one. Also really, it's very beautiful packaging, I have to admit. The Everyday Plump Hydro Cream is a lot of why I gave you that Primera rant earlier. This is one of those moisturizers that is extremely thick but also absorbs beautifully into your skin. And I feel like that is something that's a bit more difficult for moisturizers to accomplish. If you have dry skin, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I will even tell you specifically a product that just absolutely fails at this for me. It's the L'Oreal Rose moisturizer for more mature skin. It just sits on your skin, it just never absorbs. Whereas this one, it gives you both that occlusive layer and you feel it absorb into your skin. It is gorgeous, it is super thick. You see how thick that is? As for the ingredients, it's very nice also. This one does not contain any essential oils, but it does have a few plant, in quite a few plant ingredients. Of course, you're gonna get some antioxidants from those. You've got peach, anise, vanilla, fermented ginseng, quite a few other fermented ingredients in here. It's, it's lovely. It's a very lovely moisturizer. And last for this video, they have two different kinds of sheet masks, the Squalane Cuddle and the Avocado Cuddle. So I was super excited about the Avocado Cuddle, but I admit to you, I haven't tried it yet. And you may know why, because of the rant about Neogen earlier in this video. So yeah, it does contain a little bit of bergamot. It's possible that it could work out for me. I'm just genuinely nervous. It's hard, it's hard to not be nervous. I'm telling you, if your reaction is a bunch of breakouts, you just, you, you don't wanna say, oh, well, now I know if I will or won't break out. It's such a shame because I absolutely love avocado. So I'm eventually gonna get over it and try it. I just have to find the right time. But I did try this one because it does not contain my allergen of concern. This is the Squalane Cuddle. So I can tell you, the texture on the sheet mask itself is very thick. You definitely can get more than one use from it. I no longer do what I used to do a while back, which was save the sheet mask. Now instead I just make a new one with my condensed, no, constant, nope, compressed 
sheet masks. Oh, I knew you would find it in your brain. I don't know why I struggle so much with that. Why do I struggle with that word? It's like it's grayed out in my brain. Do you, do you have any words like that? I'm also that way with the number nine. I know it's, I, it's completely random, but maybe somebody understands what I'm talking about. Anyway, I would call this one a brightening formula. It's made with niacinamide, licorice, ginger, does contain some essential oil ingredients though. I'm for whatever reason able to use eucalyptus and small amounts of lavender, so it's gone all right for me, but just do be aware of that. Otherwise, it's really nice. And that's it for my Korean beauty skincare haul for the month of, wait, oh. First haul of the month. Thank you all so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video, and I will see you all next time.